From the second commandment, we turn quite naturally to the third commandment, and we find the Catechism's explanation of the third commandment in Lord's Day 36. Question and answer 99. What is God's will for us in the third commandment? That we neither blaspheme nor misuse the name of God by cursing, perjury, or unnecessary oaths, nor share in such horrible sins by being silent bystanders. In a word, it requires that we use the holy name of God only with reverence and awe, so that we may properly confess him, pray to him, and praise him in everything we do and say. Question and answer 100. Is blasphemy of God's name by swearing and cursing really such serious sin that God is angry also with those who do not do all they can to help prevent it and forbid it? Answer, yes, indeed. No sin is greater and no sin makes God more angry than blaspheming his name. That is why he commanded the death penalty for it. Having identified the God whom we are supposed to worship and discussed the way we are to worship him, the Ten Commandments now take up the issue of how we speak of the one true God whom we worship. In the Ten Commandments, we find this instruction, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. But what does it mean to misuse God's name? The Catechism offers some suggestions. We don't blaspheme, curse, perjure, nor swear unnecessary oaths. Basically, this command challenges us not to pick up God's name whenever we want and use it however we want. The Hebrew of the Ten Commandments literally reads, Do not pick up the name of the Lord for nothing. When we use God's name or Jesus' name for filler because we can't think of a better word to put there, or we thoughtlessly invoke his damnation on something or someone around us, we are lifting up the name of God for nothing, treating the creator of the universe and our redeemer as if he were an empty filler rather than the source of our life and hope. But it's not enough just to avoid bringing dishonor to the name of God by the way we speak. In healthy relationships, we care about the way others view the names of those connected to us. My grandfather ran a business in Western Michigan for many years. Not only did he want to make sure that the names on his business were well thought of, he wanted his employees and family members to be aware of the way those names were used too. In healthy relationships, we want to speak well of our spouse, our kids, our parents, and to make sure that others speak well of them too. The same is true of God. Yes, as the Catechism reports, he commanded the death penalty for a blasphemer. But more importantly, he wants his people to speak of him and hear him spoken of with love and awe in a way that fits the story of his mercy to us in Jesus Christ. Well, that doesn't mean we have to jump down the throat of everyone who thoughtlessly utters the name of God in our presence, neither does it mean that we should ignore it and pretend that it doesn't matter to us. Hopefully, if someone misuses the name of someone in this church whose reputation we respect or whose business we appreciate, we would do what we can to gently set the record straight. Should we do any less for the God who sent his son to die for us and renews us for his service by the Holy Spirit's power?